Sergeant says Spinny the shark. <laughs> a slow moving sea urchin. Archie Miles, the stinker, overhears Spinny's joke. Hey, I heard that, says Archie snarkily with a pointy sour face. Oh, hello, Archie says Charlie. I didn't see you down there. Oh, hello, Archie says Spinny. Want to be our announcer for our race? Me, said Archie. Sure. Ready? like a great announcer. Charlie and Finney raced and swam fast. Suddenly, they heard a loud zoom, 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 rum, 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 buzz with a fast speeding boat. Rum, 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 rum. Archie saw the speedy boat. Oh, look out, boys. A motor slicer is moving towards you. Finney and Charlie dove down fast to avoid the boat's sharp motor blade. Charlie pops out the water and then Finny popped up. Gee, that was close, said Charlie. That boat owner isn't supposed to be near this coral cove, complained Finny the shark sharply as he pat the back of his head with his fin flipper. Boy, that almost got my nice little back of my head. I'll get that boat next time and rip out a piece of the wood. Yeah, if I was a kid swimming out there, that would be bad news for the parents. And the boy, said Vinny. Yeah, that too. Just as Charlie said that another boat whizzed by. Whiz, 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 zoom, zoom, zoom. Whoa, 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 whoa. Charlie had to jump up high in the air out the ocean to miss the boat coming at him. Charlie did a triple twirl in the air to stay up until the boat passed his spot. As Charlie was in the air, he saw two guys in the boat wearing all black and black thick mustaches. They had tons of boxes and boats that looked like presents. Charlie splashed down in the water. You got a death wish? asked Archie. And he was so relieved Charlie was okay. You okay, Charlie? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay, said Charlie. We better let the Ocean Council know about these boaters so they can put out a public service announcement, announcement over the conch shell radio. A sap, said Penny. That's a very good idea, said Archie. Yes, the Ocean Council needs to know about these speed boaters to save lives and ocean lives, like my little sea urchin skin. Hey, my mom is a new person of Red Coral Reef Ocean Foundation. So I'll race home to tell her. She'll have to let Bernadette the Starfish man the conch shell radio, said Charlie. Bernadette is loud. They lost enough to be a safe warning to everyone about the boating, said she. Yeah, the Starfish Opera Singer is loud, so that should learn everyone, said Kitty. Come on, Charlie. And then run along, said Archie. Okay, come on, Charlie. Let's head home, said Finny. Bye, Archie. Bye, Finny. Bye, Archie, said Charlie. Bye, Charlie. And Archie, so far. Charlie and the family stepped home, and Finny left Charlie's at his house. And he said he could learn Princess Daniel and Prince Loya about the boaters near the coast. Good idea, Finny. See you later. Yes, you know they love to nibble at intruders, said Finny, smiling. <laughs> it runs in our blood to nibble, said Finny, chuckling. Charlie opened the door to his home and went inside. His mom, Claire, the octopus, was dust the furniture with two tentacles, and the other two tentacles she was putting the windows. Spray white, spray white, spray white, spray white, dust, dust, spray white, dust, 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 spray white, spray white, dust, dust, spray white. Oh, hi, Julie, said Claire, polishing the windows with the rag with her temple. Hi, Mom. Charlie snuffed in the air. Something smells delicious. Hi, Charlie, said Father Baxter from the kitchen. I'm making a macaroni casserole for dinner, said Baxter. Charlie often was stepped in. As he proudly said found the tentacle stirred ingredients in a bowl, and another tentacle got out cheese for refrigerator and milk, while the other tentacle stirred the ingredients in a bowl with a wooden spoon. Baby Jill the octopus was playing with a long green-haired mermaid baby doll. That's not cuckoo! That's not cuckoo! Come on, little dolly, dolly, dolly! Kato and Cairo 
Charlie's adopted octopus brother to play in video games in their room. I almost caught you, said Kato, as a car car catches up to the shark swimming away from the blue shark. Boom, 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 boom. The blue sirens were making loud noises from the video game. You'll never catch the shark, said Kato, playing shark chase. Oh, it's deep down the north. I don't want you playing police shark until after you finish your homework, said Baxter. Oh, um, do, what, do what your father says. Oh, mom, groaned the twins, Kato and Cairo. Do what your brother said, said Baxter, as he put the tuna casserole in the oven. Hey, mom, some boaters were racing really fast at Coral Cove today, said Charlie, and Finny and I almost got run over. Baxter, Charlie's dad looks up the alarm. It's illegal for boats to be in that part of the cove. It's protected. I should have to let the council know and alert Bernadette to get on the call video to let the other parents know and warn their kids, said Claire. Oh, the holidays always brings a lot of people to that area, says Baxter. But they know not to race boats by the group cove. There's wildlife, ocean life that are protected. And the beautiful coral reef. All which can be damaged by those speeding boats. I'll have none of that this holiday or no holiday. A holiday vacation is no excuse to break the law and cause damage. Charlie, you could have been killed, Claire says with a concern. It's okay, Mom. I'm all right. You're all right this time, but the next time is the time that I'm concerned about, said Claire. Claire gave Charlie a hug. Oh, you really care about me, Mom, says Charlie. Well, of course I do, says Claire. I'm your mother. I wasn't too sure. Now that you have your own family, said Charlie. Charlie, you're part of this family no matter how many octopus brother and sisters you had. Charlie, you're the best dolphin brother and baby octopus we've ever had. Dad got Google is a baby deal as she offers her mermaid green doll to Charlie to play with. Jeez, I've got to find some really great presents for everyone this Christmas, said Charlie. Kato and Cairo yelled out from the room. Minecraft, spacecraft, oceancraft, shark chase. I heard that, said Baxter. You boys do your homework and turn down that racket. Boys, your eyes are going to be red and your brain will turn into mush, said Claire as she sweeps the floor. The stove alarm goes off. Ding, 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 ding. Dinner time, everyone, said Claire, as Baxter took out the casserole and brought it to the table. Claire takes out drinks and cups. Everyone, come and eat. Charlie sets the table and takes out plates and spoons and forks. He sets eight spoons and eight forks at each place setting except for him. He just needs one spoon and one fork, as he doesn't have eight tentacles for arms. Everyone sits at the table and eats. Yummy, says Baby Tail. Now, for Christmas, your father and I have a very strict budget, so I'm afraid we have to give practical presents for gifts this year for Christmas. You mean we're not getting presents this year, said Kato and Warm? What crappy gifts like socks, said Kiaro, disappointed. Gaga, said Baby Tail. The spirit of Christmas holiday is love and enjoying time with family. We're healthy, and that's what's the most important thing. The boys look disappointed. Charlie tries to brighten the mood. Ah, uh, we have a beautiful decorated tree, and the hallway in the kitchen and the outside of our house is blinking 24 hours a day like Santa Winter Wonderland. Minus the present, said Cairo. Yeah, yeah, says Baby Jill. Yeah, minus the present, said Cairo. Now, boys, maybe your father will get more Christmas orders for his biscuits. We still have time before Christmas Day, said Car Claire cheerfully, their mom. Well, maybe we can help you sell them, Dad, said Charlie. Nobody wants hard biscuits. Cupcakes are all the rage, said Kato. Yeah, not some old hard biscuits, said Cairo, copying his brother Kato. Cat cat, said Baby Teal. Maybe he's right, Baxter, said Claire. Baxter looked sad and looked at his kids. A bulb went off his head. Well, I can make Christmas tree cupcakes with marshmallow cream in the middle and green frosting and a red star ganache. A Christmas tree cupcake, said Charlie, excited. Oh, boy. Can we have chocolate cupcakes, too, said Kato, chiming in. Sure, said Baxter. I'll create a holiday collection with flavors like minty winter swirl and Santa Coco Loco. Now you're talking, Dad, said Kato. Dad, Dad, said Baby Teal. I'll help you sell the cupcakes, said Charlie. 
Claire looks at her two boys, Cato and Cairo. I'll help, said Cato. Me too, said Cairo. I'm not really wanting to help. Papa, said Baby Tail. Now, this is the spirit of Christmas. Working together as a family, Claire said, smiling. A father couldn't ask for anything more, said Baxter the Judge Burley. The next day, Baxter was in the kitchen, putting on the finishing touches on his Christmas cupcakes. Charlie, Cato, and Cairo were putting the cupcakes in the holiday tins. Okay, boys, I'll make some more while you go sell these, Baxter said. Okay, Dad, said Cato, said cheerfully. Okay, said Cairo, his twin brother. The boys headed out to sell the holiday cupcakes. They went from door to door with their tins of cupcakes. First, they went to the shark family down the street. Miss Snarlsfin, Snarlsfin opened the door with rollers on her head. Hi, boys, said Miss Sally Snarlsfin. Hi, Miss Finn. We have holiday cupcakes for sale, said Kit Cairo proudly. Oh, gosh, Cairo. My boy, Finn, has cavities, so he can't eat any sweets this year. Dentist orders, said Mrs. Sally Finn, very apologetically. No worries, Miss Finn, said Charlie. Charlie and his brothers go to more houses and knock on the doors of the starfish family home. Knock, knock! An elegant woman starfish with long purple feathered shawl and a silver metallic long dress came out, of, out the door. Hello! Said the starfish lady. Hi, Mrs. Claudette Follette Fiera, said Charlie. Oh, Charlie, what do you got there? Some fish skin cream, perhaps, said Claudette Follette Fiera. No, we got something better, said Cato. Yeah, something a lot better. Mm -hmm. Something better than wrinkle cream. Something better than wrinkle cream, said Claudette Follette Fiera. We've got holiday cupcakes. We've got Christmas trees, Hanukkah trees, and a snowman shaped cupcake, said dear, dear, uh, Cairo. Oh, dear boys, my diabetes shot up every day since my trip to France. I sampled all the desserts. My doctor told me to avoid sugar. Avoid sugar. Claudette Follette Fiera said sadly as he, she eyed the delicious cupcakes. Okay, said Charlie, you take care of that diabetes. Where to next? asked Cato dejectedly. Oh, wow. If she's so rich, did you see those diamonds? And she didn't even buy one just to support us. I know. What about the eel's house? said Charlie hopefully. The boys swam to the eel's house. It was very bright and well lit up. Their house was the most decorated house on the block. Charlie and the boys knocked at the door. Knock, 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 knock. Mr. Electric Fizzle came to the door. He was well lit up. Hello, boys. What can I help you with today? We've got holiday cupcakes for sale, said Cato enthusiastically. Those cupcakes look delicious. Oh, so fabulous. Great, said Cairo, hoping for a big sell order. However, oh no, the butt thing is happening, said Cato. The however thing is happening, said Cairo. However, my kids can't have sugar as their energy levels are way too high. The sugar of their volts shoot out too much electricity. The neighbors have been complaining a lot lately. We understand, Mr. Electric, said Charlie cheerfully. Thanks for understanding. And, oh, here's a dollar. Mr. Electric put a dollar in the tin coffee can the boys had in their tentacles. Gee, thanks, Mr. Electric, said Charlie. You're welcome. Happy holidays, said Mr. Electric as he walked in the door and a big electric girl shot through the house and out the windows. Boom, 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 pow, 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 crackle, pop. Now, he's right about that. Electric popping from sugar. What are we going to do with all these cupcakes? Kata complained. We haven't sold one wine, Cairo. I know. Why don't we try Doc Harper's house? I heard he had a thousand baby turtles. Maybe he'll buy some cupcakes, said Charlie. Great idea, said Kato. Great idea, said Cairo. The boys went up to Doc Harper's house. Baby turtles were heard crying. <coughs> sounds like he has a lot of babies, said Cairo encouragingly. Yeah, sounds like a thousand babies, said Cairo. This is going to be good. The boys knocked the door. No, 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 no. Bing, 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 bing. Ring, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong. Mrs. Harper came to the door in slippers and a light pink fuzzy robe. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Kato. Hello, Cairo. Hi, Miss Harper. Congratulations on your baby, said Charlie. Yeah, congratulations, said Kato and Cairo. Oh, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Kato and Cairo. Doc and I are happy to have a healthy bunch of little baby sea turtles. 
We want to know if you'd like to buy a cupcake, said Kato. Oh, those cupcakes look beautiful. Sure, I'd love to, said Mrs. Harper. The boy smiled, hoping for a big order. I'll take one cupcake, said Mrs. Harper. I'm trying to lose some weight, but I can't resist a homemade cupcake. She gave the boys a dollar. Charlie handed her a beautifully wrapped Christmas cupcake. Thanks, Miss Harper, said Charlie. You're welcome, boys, Mrs. Harper said as she left to tug her baby. And she closed the door. She only bought one cupcake with all those kids, Kato complained. Oh, I guess they're too young to eat cupcakes, said Charlie. Oh, yes, yeah, said Cairo. The boys looked around. Look, people and kids, said Cairo. There's children and kids love sweets, said Kato. No, said Charlie. It's too close to Coral Cove, where the speeding boats are. Kato and Cairo were already swimming towards the shore where a few kids were playing. Kato and Cairo swam up, and in no time, they sold all the cupcakes. Charlie swam up. Charlie, we did it. We sold out, said Kato enthusiastically. Yeah. Yeah, if we keep selling like this, we're going to be able to buy it to have presents in time for Christmas, said Kato and Cairo joyfully. Well, how did you sell them so fast, said Charlie curiously. This lady bought all the cupcakes for her kids. She said, just don't tell anyone because she wants to keep it a secret and surprise, said Kato. Yeah, a surprise, said Kylo, copying his brother. Oh, said Charlie. Yeah, Mom and Dad are going to be so happy, said Kato. Just don't let Mom and Dad you know you swam to Coral Reef, said Charlie. The boys started to head home, and no sooner did they start to swim when a speeding boat raced by. Zoom, 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 room, 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 zoom, zoom. The blade almost cut off Kato and Cairo's tentacles, and Charlie didn't headbutt his brothers and pushed them out of the way. That was way too close, said Charlie. Man, oh man, that boat was moving fast, said Kato. Super fast, said Cairo. Just don't tell Mom and Dad. If they find out, they're going to be really, really mad. Okay, let's not tell them. Let us start to bake Christmas sponge cakes. That lady, when we will buy cakes, we just need five hundred dollars more for our presents. Whispered Kato to Kyle. Yeah, she seems to have a lot of money. Ah, I can't wait to get Shark Boy Six and Squid Adventures in Cairo. Yeah, said Kato. Squid Adventure is so cool. Yeah, what? Said Charlie. Oh, nothing. Said Cairo. Oh, nothing. Said Kato. The next day, Benny came over and Charlie went to play swim tag with his best friend. Meanwhile, Kato and Cairo were busy boxing red and green boxes of sponge cake that their dad Baxter made. These cakes look great, Dad, said Kato. Thanks, son, said Baxter. You boys put a lot of work selling those Christmas cupcakes yesterday. I'm really proud of you. Me too, said Claire. Thanks, Mom, said Cairo. Can I? Can I help, said Charlie? I think we got it covered, Kato. Right, Cairo? Uh, yeah, said Cairo to his brother. Now, don't be too long after school, said Claire. Don't wander off too far, said Baxter. Okay, said the boys, crossing their tentacles behind their back as they said okay. The boys put the boxes of cakes in their backpack and headed out the door. Come on, Cairo, after school. We can go back to Coral Cove and sell these, these cakes to that lady, said Cairo to Kato. Roger, I mean right, said said. Kato to Cairo. Charlie swam to school with Vinny, and a lot of students seemed to be wearing the designer Frederico Finn sneakers and Frederico Finn purses. Vinny saw Princess Zoe with Frederico Finn sneakers on and a purse. Boy, oh boy, I hope my pop gets me a pair for Christmas. Geez, don't those shoes cost a fortune? Said, Vin said Charlie. Yeah, but I'm worth it, said Vinny, grinning and showing off his big rows of shark teeth. Laura swims by and sports a crossbody Frederico Finn purse. Kyra has a new high heel Frederico Finn's on, and Princess Zoya has a Frederico double gold chain purse. She stares at the school kids that are wearing the designer label. How is everyone able to afford these unaffordable brands? She complains to her brother as she swims by Charlie in a huff. I don't know how these kids are able to afford Frederico Finn. It's super expensive. Huh, something's just not right. Maybe we raised up the minimum wage too much, said Princess Zoya to Prince Zoya. Yeah, we need to talk to my dad about this and ever can afford this. I can't be seen in a Frederico Finn if everyone in school has a Frederico Finn purse and shoes. Yeah, me either, said Prince Zoya as they, they swam away. 
after school, Vinny was waiting for Charlie to get a class. He waves at Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, Charlie. Come on, come on, come on, Charlie, hurry. Hey, what's the rush, Vinny? Holy, oh, boy. There's a pop-up sushi shop, and they have Frederico Finn on sale, said Vinny. Wow, a Frederico Finn sale? Wow. I want to get a belt, as I didn't know my pop got me the sneakers. Well, how do you know, Vinny, said Charlie. Well, I shook my present under the tree, and then I wrapped it. You wrapped it back, said Vinny. What? Just 
for St. Cairo? Come on. So definitely want to buy all these cakes too, St. Cairo. The boys rang the doorbell. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Ring, 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 ring. A man with a mustache and a gruffy beard opened the door. Hi, happy holidays. We have holiday cakes for sale, said Cato and Cairo proudly. A man with a deep voice says, holiday cakes? He was confused, but then said, oh, I don't you come in. The boys stepped inside. Sit right here. I'll be right back, the man said. The boys sat down. Boy, oh boy, he's going to tell the lady that we're here and she'll buy all of our cakes. Suddenly, a big net was over the boys and they were in a trap. Got them, the man said to the lady. Good. Those mentally octopus will be our dinner tonight, said the women. Help, 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 cried Cato and Cairo. The man took the net to the kitchen and put the octopus in a big pot of water. Meanwhile, Charlie was swimming with Vinny. Hey, Charlie, let's go check on Urgy, said Vinny. My mom doesn't want us to go near the croak hole, said Charlie. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I'm going to get in trouble. Suddenly, a boat full of packages sped by, and a box out of the water and landed in the water. The box floated up to Vinny. Hey, Charlie, look, a box fell out of the boat. Serve that guy right for driving so fast, Charlie said to him. I wonder if we'll get a reward to return it. It's probably a Christmas present for his kid. Did you see all those packages, said Charlie? Well, maybe we can put out an ad out. Charlie, it's better to go in person and get the rewards at Vinny. Well, we should just return it, not worry about a reward. Doing good, but, but just doing it for the sake of pure doing it for good, said Charlie. Boy, Charlie, I have lots to teach you. You gotta make money in this world, as being good doesn't pay. Vinny convinces Charlie to go with him to return the package to the boat owner. They swim up in another speeding boat, pulls in with tons of packages. Charlie and Vinny see Archie on the shore. Hi, Archie! Shh, quiet. Those boaters are here, said Archie. Okay, but why? Why do we have to be quiet, said Vinny, confused. Something fishy is going on, said Archie. Don't go over there behind that bush. Vinny and Charlie go behind the bush. Just as the front door of the house opens, a lady comes out and greets the boat guard. Hey, that's the lady from yesterday. You bought the cupcakes, said Charlie. The guy holds out a box and puts it on the ground. They open the box and a big screen TV is inside. I've got a fire for that, said the lady. Great, said the guys. We've just got to remove the serial numbers and put a new fake one on these TVs and they're ready. Did you get any gold jewelry, said the slim lady wearing a light pink skinny jeans to the ankles with high heels. We just got TV and we took artwork from the Johnson's house today, said thug number one. Is it a Picasso painting, said the lady. She looks at the painting. Do you know that you brought me a Picasso painting? We just know you like art, said thug number two. I can find a paint, a buyer for this painting. It'll be worth a million dollar commission, said the lady. A million dollars. Did you hear that, Charlie? Yes. That's a lot of money, said Vinny. Boy, oh boy, I wonder how much more the lady will give us for this box, questions, Vinny. Hey, Vinny, I wonder what's in the box, Charlie. Charlie opens the box, and inside is gold jewelry, TV, and a computer. Look, it says the Hollisers, said Charlie. The Hollisers? You mean the cousins of the electric eels, said, said Vinny. Aren't they on a vacation, said Ochi. Something smells fishy, said Ochi. But think of the rewards, said Vinny. Vinny, these people are thieves, said Charlie. These can thieves, yes. These can be generous, said Vinny, unrelenting. We better look and bring it to the police, said Ochi. You two party poochers, poopers, just let me give it to the lady and give my reward, said Vinny. Vinny, this is stolen loot, said Charlie. It's stolen loot, said Ochi. You boys need to report this to the shark police and let them know, said Ochi. Just as the lady says, oh, by the way, come see what I caught for dinner. Oh, I'm hungry, said Vinny. I wonder what she's making for dinner. Vinny, don't go look, says Charlie. That shark has no sense, said Ochi. He thinks he's invincible, but he's the mighty king of heroes in his comic book character, said Charlie. Oh, no, no, says Vinny. Charlie, come quick. Charlie gets fun and concerned and goes to the window by the kitchen. Charlie, don't get alarmed, but I, I need you to look. Just promise me you don't get alarmed. Oh, no, 